Right, so we are observing World Mental Health t t Day today. So let's look at issues of mental health awareness in the workplace. Mental health issues, that's a sensitive topic that employers need to navigate when dealing with employees. We're joined by Khodi Shopashe, an uh, associate in the employment law practice at Cliff Decker Hofmeyer, uh, to talk more about this issue. Thank you very much, uh, Khodi Shaw, for speaking to us this evening. Uh, so the global theme for World Mental Health Day is mental health is a universal human right. But the unfortunate reality on the ground is that in many workplaces in South Africa, employees are still struggling to access other basic employment rights, such as equal pay, basic medical care, safe workspaces, gender equality, and many more, which means that often mental health awareness is very far back on the priority list. How do you in the employment law space advocate to change this? Good evening, Ms. Atting, and uh, good evening to all the viewers. Yes, so World Mental Health Day is, is, is very important, especially in our, in our spaces. As employment lawyers and as just people in the employment space, we, we try to just advocate for mental health and we communicate to employers that mental health should be prioritized in your businesses the very same way you prioritize um, the health of your employees in various other ways. So, for example, if you know that your employees have certain physical ailments or ailments, you'll you'll be prudent in making sure that those are sorted out. So we try to advocate for mental health by simply stating that it is the same illness um, or, or carry the same implications as somebody mm -hmm. who has any other physical implicate of ailments that you can see with your own eyes. So we try to kind of liken them because in essence, they are the same because they affect us as humans in the same way. Hmm. What does the law in South Africa say about mental health welfare in the workplace? Do we have strict laws in place that regulate what employers are supposed to do in terms of providing employees with access to mental health care? Yes. And as, a, as, a, as I've mentioned before, the, the pool that employment lawyers or just employment space is trying to do is just to get employees or employers rather to look at mental health in the same light as physical ailments. So the law currently as it stands is that every employer is obligated to create a safe environment um, in which the employees can work. So now, when we take that into consideration, it's important to think about, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is your physical safety. Mm -hmm. However, the interpretation of, of our law goes further than that. It goes further than just making sure that your employees are protected or they can work in an environment that is reasonably practical for them to work. So it goes beyond just them being practically safe. Uh, it goes to their mental health as well. If we're talking about interpretation only, and, and there aren't actually physical clauses written in, talking specifically about mental health, do you think that's problematic and that we need to perhaps look at those laws to, to flesh them out in more detail? Because interpretation, we've seen in many situations, you know, one person's interpretation is different to another's. Yeah. And yes, I, I would agree with you. Um, 100% right there. We need laws that go deeper into exactly defining what these things are. And and our law is actually making moves in terms of that. The the code of good practice that deals with harassment goes deep into even defining terms that we've never had before, terms such as bullying and what that looks like. Because bullying in the workplace, as we all know, is, 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 is something that is affecting most of our employees. So the code of good practice which is which was published last year goes deeper into trying to define what it looks like for someone to be bullied and what a, what recourse such an individual has so a law so our law is making strides in that regard however i'll i'll definitely agree with you especially on such a day uh world health um um mental health day it's it's important for all of us to recognize that every single person um is fighting unseen battles and um, those should be recognized in our law as we go forward. What are some of the most commonly neglected mental health issues in the workplace specifically? Yes, I think the most commonly neglected ones and which 
which um, there's a judgment that recently came out that deals with this, but it's the most commonly neglected mental health issues are issues that come from bullying that is caused directly or indirectly by senior employees. So for instance, because it creates a stigma, it becomes very difficult. Um, employees don't know who to report to, they don't know who to talk to in that regard. So I would definitely say that when there's bullying that is caused or, or by an individual in the same workplace, that is usually um, left out because usually employees are either nervous to talk about it or they just don't feel like that is the place to talk about it. They'd rather just take it outside elsewhere and just deal with it there. So that in my in my in my view, I think mm. that is one of the most prevalent ones. So the COVID-19 pandemic really brought mental health uh, to the fore. Um, it, it's become an, a, a massive buzzword right around the globe. Uh, not that it's the first time that we're acknowledging the importance of mental health, but I think it's really come to the fore in mainstream media, in the conversations that we have, um, the, the kinds of care that we are looking for for ourselves but simultaneously people are also under huge amounts of pressures um just looking at financial pressures on south africans um to try and make ends meet load shedding access to basic services and then you look at a global context where we're also sitting with major conflicts erupting uh, globally and, and these are all things that have an impact on people's mental health, whether you might realize it in the moment or not. So to get to my question, when we look at productivity, do you think mental health is going to become something that sort of slips back into the background once it's no longer such a buzzword? Or when we look at productivity, is it going to stay something that employers will need to look at? Yes, good question. And I definitely think that we'll, we're definitely going to be moving forward in terms of it staying in the forefront of our minds, in the forefront of employers' minds. Because the simple reality of this is that every or the average human being spends about a third of their life at work. And taking that into consideration, about 90,000 hours of your life at work, you cannot separate your normal or your your everyday circular life from what you have to do at work so i definitely think that in terms of where our law is going and where our society in general is going mental health is being spoken about more there are more people that are starting to recognize certain behaviors not just um as behaviors but they look they look deeper and they see what could be the cause of this it could be something else so i'm definitely of the view that um where society is going, where our law is going, and where our courts are going, and where our courts are actually leading right now. They're actually leading and asking employers, employer, have you actually considered this employee's mental health? And the fact that we're seeing that in our courts, which our courts um, have been traditionally very conservative in terms of subjective things such as mental illness and so forth, which it shouldn't be subjective, however, but we're seeing more and more of that coming to the forefront. And that's just very encouraging. It shows that we as a people are learning more about things that we could not fully understand. Well, thank you. Unfortunately, that is where we're going to have to leave it, but we do appreciate your insights. That was Khadi Shopashe, Associate in the Employment Law Practice.